<laughs> hello, 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 everyone. We're back. It's been a long ass time, but we are back. Oh. Um, for the large majority of you watching who most assuredly forgot that I or this playthrough even existed, uh, hello again. I do exist. Um, and we're getting back into this. Uh, I did not stop by choice back, I think it's been nine months now. Um, I didn't have any, like, desire to stop playing or reading, rather. Um, around the time of my last video, I had to move to a place where there was, um, a small, loud child around often. Uh, and I mean, between COVID complications and family problems stacking up, I mean, I could list excuses all day. Um, point is, I had to stop for a long enough time um, that the story was no longer fresh in my mind. Uh, I really don't like doing that. I mean, often with games, if I if it's like a story-based game, and I, I spend too long away from it, I always feel like I need to restart. Uh, picking up in the middle of where I left off and trying to like figure out what was going on with the memory not as great like mine. Um, it's it's always been something I didn't like to do. Um, so then the game started getting procrastinated a few months ago because I knew I had like 10 hours of reading what I had already read to catch up to the point where I was. Um, and I just wanted to do new stuff. You know, I, I wanted to read where I left off. Uh, but I just felt like I couldn't... I needed, you know, in a game like this where I, f I feel like the small details are so important, I really wanted everything to be fresh in my mind. Um, so we finally got to the point where uh, my living situation changed again. Uh, so I not only reread everything, but I, I basically watched all my videos up to this point. So, and I did that so that I could remind myself of all the theories and thoughts I had up to this point. So like 100% I am in this like I I, I just rewatched all my videos for Umineko in the past week so I am super refreshed about every single thing happening um, just 100% up to date and ready to do this excited to get back in um, so yeah I mean we left off nine months ago with uh, five missing people I think it was Kraus Rudolph, Kitty, Rosa, and Goda. Um, and we don't know where they are. That's, uh, that's the last we saw of everything. Natsu, he went to go check on Kinzo. And now we are in the cousin's uh, guest house, where the cousins are. So, let's do this. I've been waiting a long time to get back into this, and I'm excited. So let's let's do this. Hopefully, get more than ten episodes done this time, please. Definitely, <laughs> we're gonna keep going with this. Hell yeah! All right, let's do it. George, Anarchy, Jessica, and I were snoring loudly on the beds in the cousins' room. But Maria, who had gone straight to bed without joining in, was completely awake. As she rubbed her sleepy eyes and looked around, she was met with the loud snoring of the other three cousins. Let me just double check. Okay, yeah, we're good. For a while, Maria had to think about what had happened. After that, she realized that her mother wasn't with her, and she quickly got lonely. Maria left the cousin's room, trying to head to the room that had been arranged for her and her mother. Paying no heed to the three who were sleeping soundly, she slammed the door shut. In response, Spatler mumbled and rolled over in his sleep, but it wasn't enough to wake him. 
After a while, Maria returned, once again opening the door with a lively bang. Oh. Is she still, like, half asleep? When she had left the room, her face had been sleepy, but now that she was back, she looked irritated. What's wrong with her? <laughs> After that, she climbed up on Battler's bed, which had happened to be the closest, and started yelling and jumping on it like it was a trampoline. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure that'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> After making sure I was awake, Maria moved over to George Anaki's bed and started jumping on that too. In that manner, the three of us were all greeted with an extremely pleasant awakening. Yeah, pleasant. That's one way to put it. おこしてくれたんだね。僕たちは夕べが遅かったから寝坊しちゃったのを起こしてくれたんだね。でももう少しだけ起こし方を優しくしてくれると完璧だったかな。ジョージ兄さんは本当に大人だよ。尊敬する
Okay. When she did, Kinzo was already awake and looking down out of the window. We hadn't ascertained Kinzo's status yet, so I guess his status is doing fine for the moment. How are you gonna feel about her using the key? Yeah, is he gonna be mad at you or Genji or both? Kinzo spoke with his back still facing her. His voice was not harsh but calm, and Natsuhi was slightly reassured. However, though he was awake, he wouldn't have ignored all that knocking if he was in a good mood. Natsuhi wasn't able to relax. Oh. わが友がそれに足ると思ったならば話を聞かぬわけにもいくまい。いや、しかし、お父様、that's what, that's what was happening, but now there's different issues. He should know that. He started the ceremony. So he should know there's uh, some stuff going down, right? His last words carried the threat that any further questions would not be appreciated. Natsuhi realized that adding any further pleas would finally bring his wrath down upon her. She didn't look forward to facing Eva's sarcasm, but there was nothing more Natsuhi could do. Natsuhi decided to give up. Bowing silently, she tried to leave the room before Kinzo's spasmodic temper could flare up. Well, oh, as she did, Kinzo spoke to her. His voice was so calm and gentle, it felt like it came from an entirely different person. Okay. The scene was going about as predictable as it could have possibly been. But now, this is unexpected. She kind of does. I mean, even if she says no, I mean, she has completely devoted herself to Kraus and the Oshidamiya family, but... Mm. Her devotion is strong, even if she's not happy. But she might be playing it up a bit more for Kinzo's sake. Oh, she truly wasn't exaggerating. Okay. Such was the resolve she felt when she applied the Ashurimiya family name to herself. This is, um... Sort of an alternate version to the really happy song that plays a lot. And that's precisely why she was so saddened when her husband didn't treat her like an Ushida Mia, leaving her to race about in vain. Uh-huh. <laughs> where, where are you going with that? <laughs> 
is a strange thought. Natsuhi was shocked. If Kinzo's words just now were what they seemed, it would have been more than enough to make up for all she'd suffered up to that point. Kimzo once again faced away from her. He told her to forget it, but Natsuhi couldn't help feeling a warmth in her heart. お父様が残された者も全てこの夏日が必ず山持って見せますからお前に肩欲の足をまとう資格はないしかしお前の心には確かに肩欲の足が刻まれているならばお前は間違いなく我が血族で it seems like she's definitely the favorite out of like well I don't know about the grandchildren I mean I know he's uh, spent a lot of time with Maria but among the uh, children and in-laws Natsuhi seems like the one he likes the most. お前の衣服に和紙がないことをあざ笑う者もいよう。しかし、それに耳を貸すことはない。心に和紙を持つ者だけが真の私の血族なのだ。お前を後ろ宮家に迎えられたことを今は光栄に思っている。I think you just made Natsuhi's day, week, and month. Without saying anything more, Kinzo remained with his back to Natsuhi. However, Natsuhi couldn't help feel something warm well up inside her that she hadn't felt since long ago, when she had just been a child. Natsuhi bowed silently to his back and left the room. Yeah. Go away. <laughs> when Natsuhi left the study, she saw a whoops. She saw Eva climbing the stairs, and their eyes met. Eva was smirking unpleasantly, thinking that Natsuhi would leave drudgingly after failing to convince Kinzo. However, the way Natsuhi was now, such a frivolous laugh would not disturb her. She was not permitted to wear the family crest on her clothing, but she was permitted to wear it in her heart. So she spoke calmly, clearly, and confidently, with the dignity of one who would protect the Ushidamiya family's glory. じゃ、お父様を説得できなかったんなら素直にそう言えばいいじゃない。あれですね。お父様が嘆かれるお気持ちも分かろうというものです。それはどういう意味よ。Natsuhi <笑><笑> did not answer. Just as Kinzo had done earlier, she showed Eva her back and headed down the stairs. Eva finally realized that she was being made fun of that something had happened to quickly bolster Natsuhi's confidence. Even so, she apparently didn't have the courage to risk Kinzo's wrath. Unable to even knock on the door, she could only click her tongue, make a motion as though, she, as though scratching at it, and follow after Natsuhi. So, so then, no, they're still missing. No, they're still missing. 
書斎の中にはいませんでしたお父様が夫たちの下船な話のために入室を許すこともありえませんから行き先を知ることもないでしょう下に降りて使用人たちが探してくれるのを待ちましょう<笑>朝食は遅れますがお茶でもいかがですエヴァさんべ別に結構よエヴァ couldn't hide her confusion at the complete difference in Natsuhi's attitude This is great. I'm happy. I have not forgotten how much Team Natsuhi I am. So, this is just wonderful. <laughs> she was acting so boldly, and while Ava hated to admit it, she even had a sense of dignity about her. Unable to find fault with anything, Ava could only follow Natsuhi back to the parlor. When the two of them returned to the parlor, Hideyoshi had been joined by the four children and Nanjo. Genji, who had been talking with Hideyoshi, reported the current situation when he noticed that Natsuhi had returned. The clock read a little past eight. You know, it's weird. I mean, Kraus, Rudolph, Kitty, Rosa, sure. Them being gone, like, they could be together. But Goda is, like, the odd one out. He's not, like, part of the group. He's not one to be, like, hanging around them. He doesn't have business with them. He's the chef and a butler. So it's weird that he's included in the group of five that are missing. Unless, well, I don't know if the group of four, like, asked a staff member to accompany them wherever they were going. The clock read a little past eight. Eight should have been the time to start breakfast. Normally, going over that time limit would be a disgrace to the host. Didn't the, uh, grandchildren get up, like, at, like, six? Oh, wait, did it say they were here? Oh, yes, the four children. Sorry, they are here. Never mind. Forgot about that. Normally, going over that time limit would be a disgrace to the host. Oh? Is that number six? I didn't. I really didn't think Shannon would be included because I thought. I mean, the two who are close, the most obvious two people that fit that are Shannon and George. After the scene from a couple episodes ago. So I didn't think that Shannon or George would be part of the original six. I thought they would be the next two. Interesting that Shannon's not around. Just a little walk, yeah. Just how many people had gone missing by now? Now that the number was this large, it was starting to feel truly unpleasant, as though the people here were the only ones being left out of something interesting. At least, that seemed to reflect the feelings of the children, and Maria in particular. I think the six of them just went on a treasure hunt. They're just searching through the forest, hacking down vines with machetes and trying to find a big old pile of gold. She was indignant, her stomach grumbling, almost as though her mother and the others had left her alone to go off and eat something delicious without her. Yeah, I think Maria, her temper tantrum's going to come back if Rosa isn't found soon. And it's going to be an issue. The other children were flipping through the channels on the television, trying to find a program that might interest Maria and cheer her up again. Or at least distract her, make her forget that Maria's not, or that Rosa's not around. Nanjo was sitting on the sofa, gazing blissfully at the children while reading a book. It must have been a book about chess. The sound of footsteps came rushing towards them with a pitter-patter. 
There was only one set. So before they realized, so they realized before seeing who it belonged to, that it was probably Cannon, not Kraus and the rest. And that it is. Where could they be? She didn't know where they were, but they had to be somewhere on this island. They hadn't a thing to eat since the previous night, so their stomachs must be growling about now. They'd probably come plodding back on their own accord before long. By now, Natsuhi was thoroughly ex exasperated and started to feel that there was no reason for them to go out of their way and search. She's going to get bad in bad mood again after getting so lifted up by Kinzo. Natsuhi left the parlor, acting as though the release in tension had caused a new surge in her headache. Cannon tried to call her back, but Natsuhi left swiftly. But... Cannon sounded evasive. It looked as though he didn't know where they were, but it spotted something that might be connected to their disappearance. Eva and Hideyoshi noticed this exchange of words and came over. They'd probably picked up on something strange in Cannon's behavior. Did he find an object? Something? Okay. Storehouse. Cannon hesitated once more. His tone wasn't at all what you'd expect from this usually fearless boy. Seeing this, Eva and Hideyoshi looked at each other dubiously. Wait, so you saw it? And you didn't look inside, but it looked strange. What? Oh, to get the key. But. What's going on? よう、わからんが、とにかく中を調べればいいだけの話じゃないか。その倉庫の鍵はどこにあるんや。使用人室にあります。すぐに中を確かめましょう。why did he think it looked strange? Are there windows? Could he see inside? Cannon dashed off to the servant room and returned with the key. Genji left the parlor, saying that he would go check, but then Eva and Hideyoshi followed after him. What was this something strange about the storehouse that had caused the usually fearless Cannon to hesitate? You'd think they'd get him to explain before heading out, like, Cannon, just tell us what you saw, buddy. It was still pouring outside, but perhaps their curiosity over this something that Cannon couldn't talk about won out. While the children made a big fuss watching television, Cannon and the rest dashed over to the entrance. The tension is like, I'm like, all nervous, like, I don't know what's going on. The Rose Garden Storehouse was a place that housed various tools used to manage the garden. It was definitely not a pretty building. Because of its appearance, it had been built so that it was hidden in the corner of the Rose Garden. Cannon, Genji, Eva, and Hideyoshi came cutting across the Rose Garden, holding umbrellas. They entered a small path just off the Rose Garden, which was normally off-limits for those appreciating the garden and only used by those maintaining it. As they dashed down that, the storehouse came in view in front of them. Okay. We got creepy sounds. I don't notice anything off-putting. 
yet it was quite an old shed and compared to the flawlessly perfect beauty of the rose garden it was pretty seedy looking it was easy to understand why it had been built in a hard to see place Ava and Hideyoshi arrived at the storehouse long after Canon and Genshi. What? What? When Ava looked where Cannon was pointing, she was at a loss for words. Noticing this, Hideyoshi also followed Cannon's finger and was likewise too shocked to speak. The entrance to the storehouse was a kind of shudder. And there, everyone suddenly realized why Cannon had been unable to describe the words had been unable to find the words to describe what they saw now. On the shutter, which was completely filthy from being exposed to wind and rain for so long, stuck right on it. There was something that looked like a strange, dark red liquid? Okay mucus or maybe it was some sticky paint or you know blood an indescribably eerie shape was drawn on the shutter with some kind of ghastly substance the rain had caused it to drip down like fresh blood leaking from an open wound no more beating around the bush some kind of mark was drawn there with a ghastly substance that looked like blood, in a shape that seemed to suggest something ominous. Two circles were drawn there, and inside them was a design that looked like a cross. Don't see the cross symbol. We got the two outer circles. Maybe it'll become clear in a moment. The four ends of the cross were widely exaggerated, and looked like some kind of crest from somewhere around Europe. Oh, oh, that's what you mean by a cross. This, I see. Yeah, I get what you mean. Okay, definitely. And in the cracks between these shapes, written closely packed together, were some unfamiliar characters, or possibly symbols. <laughs> Oh, that's some witch shit. That's some demon shit. It wasn't surprising that Hideyoshi would say that about such a ghastly shape drawn with a deep red dripping substance. This? <laughs> Makes me all the more worried about what the hell is inside. Natsuki's gonna come back with tea for everyone and they're all gonna be gone. Oh. Yeah, let's open up the storehouse. See, Genji is well aware of the ceremony and well aware that Beatrice is returning, and so is Canon. You know, they both talked about it before. Yet they seem... Especially canon, I mean, he couldn't even bring it up. They seem, uh... They, they're not acting like this is to be expected. Of Beatrice's arrival and all that. 
Genji remembered that he had just recently seen another scribble, and that it too had ma been made with a strange dark red substance of the same color as this. That must have been... That's right. He'd seen it on the door to Natsuhi's room. Okay. Yeah, they didn't show it in the CG, but I think it was just supposed to be there. Kanoku! さっさとこの落書きを消して戻りましょう。たとえそうことはいえ、実家の落書きは本当に腹立たしいわ。はい。This at the house. Things have been, like, really tense. Cannon squatted in front of the shutter and unlocked it. He then lifted up with all of his strength. A boisterous noise resounded, and the eerie shape drawn on the shutter began to get sucked in through the top as the shutter was raised. At least for the time being, that ominous drawing disappeared from their direct gaze, and they all breathed breathe a sigh of relief. I'm cutting out before we get to see inside the shed. Thanks to a kid's program they came across, Maria was feeling much better. Battler and Jessica were poking fun at the kid's show at every turn, cackling together. George was enjoying the program with Maria from her perspective. Yeah, when you're watching the kids' stuff, you just gotta, you know, you can cringe at it, and you can make fun of it all the time, but it's better if you just let go and be like, you know what, it's a kids' show. Just put yourself, like, in that mindset for a little bit and let go. <laughs> Nanjo sat on a sofa by himself, passing the time by reading quietly. They heard hurried footsteps coming from the hallway. They were the footsteps of a single person. Natsuhi? Did that mean it wasn't the group of four that had just left? Oh. You're back. It was Genji. It was very rare for Genji, who considered being out of breath a violation of a servant's virtues, to be gasping for air. Did you see something in the storehouse? He had probably come dashing back from outside the mansion. His shoulders were soaking wet, and he didn't have his usual trim appearance. When Genji noticed Nanjo looking at him, he gave a small silent bow and quickly approached him. Oh boy. Why do you need a doctor? As Genji whispered something in Nanjo's ear, Nanjo went pale. I am so tense right now. <laughs> oh my god. What is going on? He rose from the sofa, trying not to be noticed by the children who were still engrossed by the TV. And the two of them rapidly left the parlor, muffling their footsteps. Oh, uh, did I leave at, like, the worst time nine months ago? I feel like I left, like, at the most exciting point so far in the game. Uh... Oh, just as they were about to exit the parlor, they came across Natsuhi, who was pushing a servant cart loaded with the tea set. Genji whispered something in Natsuhi's ear, and Natsuhi went pale to an apparent shock. <laughs> What's going on? Then, leaving the servant cart where it was, the three of them dashed towards the entrance. George noticed them running down the rose garden through the window. なんだろう。元気。何かあったのかな。なんか、なんか、なんか、なんか、なんか、なんか、なんか、なんか、なんか、なんか、なんか、なんか、なんか、なんか、なんか、なんか、なんか、なんか、なんか、なんか、なんか
and that the serving car had been abandoned in the entrance to the parlor, they also realized that something was the matter. Oh boy. <laughs> For some reason, what Battler said sounded extremely indiscreet. But they couldn't deny that they were a little insecure and concerned after seeing the adults run off into the rain without regards to their appearance. Let me just check on time here. Where are we at? Uh, 40 minutes? Okay, got plenty of time. Jessica's uneasy words spoke for all of them. Hey, Maria. Are you coming? Or are you watching TV? I think Maria should stay here. Please. Yeah. Good idea. Is someone gonna watch her? Or are you guys gonna you guys are just gonna leave her all alone in the house. I don't like that idea either. I feel like someone should be staying, you know, with the nine year old in the mansion. Maria -chan. Really? Come on, George, you're the adult of the group here. You know better. Uh, it's not a good idea. By the time the kids made it outside, the adults were no longer in sight. But Jessica seemed to have a pretty good idea where they'd gone, judging by the direction they had been running. Following Jessica, we ran through the rain-soaked rose garden. The wind seemed to suddenly get stronger. The malicious sound of thunder began to ring out like it had the previous night. It felt like an eerie something had surrounded the island and was trying to stop us from moving forward. Jessica, Just as Jessica had said, they began to see a storehouse in front of them. They could also see the adults there. The shutter to the storehouse was open and several adults looked as though they were searching for something. For some reason, only Natsuhi was outside the storehouse. Without even holding an umbrella, she looked like she was hanging her head and her back was fa facing them. What's going on? There was Genji, Nanjo, and Natsuhi, who had just left the mansion. The ones who'd left earlier, Kanon, Eva, and Hideyoshi, were also there making for a small crowd of people. But there was absolutely no bustle of activity. When Natsuhi realized that the children were approaching, a terrible expression rose to her face, and she ran at them with arms spread wide. Oh no! <laughs> What's going on? Who's dead? There are bodies in the storehouse, right? It's not going to be all five or six of them, is it? It's got to just be one body, right? But despite that, no, because of that, the kids saw the scene Natsuhi was trying to keep them away from. Inside the storehouse, with its shutter wide open, a faint fluorescent light shone down. And right there was... I don't want to click. I don't want to click. What is it? Jessica's piercing shriek rang out. But that was just because Jessica's scream was the loudest. The same thing spilled out of Battler and George's mouths as well. Oh, <laughs> what is it? Eva spread her arms just like Natsuhi, roaring at the kids with a bone-chilling expression on her face. <laughs> oh my god, what is happening? When Natsuhi spread her arms, I thought she was trying to prevent us from advancing any further. But that wasn't why Eva was spreading her arms right now. 
She was trying to stop us kids from seeing that terrible scene. It was her mother's heart trying to protect the eyes and hearts of us children by blocking our view of that terrible scene by at least the width of one of her arms. Blood? I'd seen this cheap kind of cheap scene all too often. In manga, TV, anime, in movies, I'd seen it over and over again. This was just just seeing something appear in real life that I'd seen in plenty of times before in some of those more sensational movies, right? That alone shouldn't... Ah, uh, but that, that suit... It's that old bastards, isn't it? Alright, Rudolph, at least. I get it. Then that's... Oh no, it's gonna be all of them! Uncle Kraus and Kitty said it and Aunt Rosa... No. Oh my god. It's been a little while then. Yeah. We're at 8 p we're at 8 a.m., right? So it happened around 2. We saw... They gave us a quick flash of everyone around midnight. Damaged after their deaths? Yeah, yeah, Ava and Hideyoshi and George lucked out here. They're the only one of the four groups that didn't, uh... What about Goda? Is Goda here? They only list... They only list Krauss, Rudolph, Kitty, and Rosa, right? Holy shit. Aunt Natsuhi caught Jessica in her arms and Aunt Eva caught Georgia. So I was the only one who could approach the entrance to the storehouse. Ah. Uh, if only there had been someone to catch me too. I wouldn't have needed to have this horrible evil scene burned into my eyes. No, that's not it. It isn't that there's no one here to catch me. The people who should catch me, they're right there, aren't they? Oh, he lost both his parents! And his real mom's already gone. Oh my god. Ah. Oh. Just as Jessica said, it did look like a storehouse for gardening tools. A lawnmower with extra blades, a grass sickle, and a hammer. Some carpentry tools such as a saw. Is this what's on your mind right now? Piled up potted plants and bags of fertilizer, yeah? And treated just the same, the corpses of several people had been laid to rest there. No. Had been tossed in there. I could tell them by their clothes. That old bastard and kitty son. Uncle Kraus and Aunt Rosa. Beyond that, Goda son. And. Are there still more of them? So Goda is in here. Is Shannon in here too? How many people died? You're fucking kidding me. Dude. I can't even count them on one hand. Damn it! Holy shit. If you can't count out that six, it's gotta be six. I didn't know whether it had been one of these gardening tools, which if used for something other than their intended purpose could definitely be wielded with a naked brutality. Or whether some horrible tool had been brought in here specifically for this. Anyway, each one of the bodies jammed in here had been given an atrocious makeup. It wasn't makeup, it was more like their faces had been plowed. Oh god! Jesus, man! 
Their faces were smashed, forced into ex expressions that normal people couldn't even make after death. Oh, I couldn't tell where the eyes or noses were, but I could find their mouths. Because they were gaping wide, their gums exposed. Their front teeth were missing, and even the cheeks that should have covered all this were torn up and laid bare. That trendy makeup you always spent so much time on, even though you're a man, isn't doing a thing now. <laughs> Holy shit. Why, why are they so brutally, like, disconfigured? Why are they, like... We have the symbol on the garage door. We have six corpses mangled almost beyond recognition to the point where it's even hard to count how many bodies there are. This is insane. <laughs> oh. This is insane. Oh. No face. Damn. This is so weird to see Battler like this too. He's so. He's got this never-ending positivity, you know. <sighs> So messed up. It's so messed up. なんだよ、俺は。俺たちのことを思い出すときは、この口ちゃくちゃの化け物みたいな顔をいつも思い出せたのかよ。そいつの最高だぜ。くそ親父のニヤニヤとした顔を思い出さなくていいんだからよ。
disregarding age and appearance, I fell to my knees clinging to Anakin's waist and sobbing. Oh, thank God Maria didn't come. <laughs> thank Christ Maria did not come. It was as if I was crying on behalf of everyone there, representing the feelings of everyone there. I screamed over and over. Oh. my time on the video. Do I need to switch to a new recording? 55 minutes. Alright. I'm not done recording. I'm just going to switch to a new video to keep the sync in track. Holy shit. Well, I feel like a complete asshole now that I stopped nine months ago a mere hour before, like, shit got real. <laughs> oh my god. I need I need to take a few minutes to process all this in between videos. Because holy hell. Ugh. Alright, that's six down. At least I assume it's six. They didn't actually confirm that Shannon was part of them, right? He just said there were five, probably more. More than he could count on one hand. Kraus, Rudolph, Kitty, Rosa, Goda, and probably Shannon. Holy fuck. Fuck. The story just like pff, fucking 180. I love the tension that they did to build up to that scene. Like the whole like recording session, the 40 minutes before this shit went down, I was like on the edge of my seat. Like I felt tense. There was no music. It was just the sound of the rain and like this like anxiety-inducing atmosphere where you knew something was wrong, something was going wrong, but you weren't being told what it was just yet. Wow. That was, that was really well done. That was great. Holy shit. All right. I'm going to keep recording, but uh, this video will end here and uh, start a new one. Oh, all right. Well, thank you for rejoining me back now that we've uh, started our journey again. Hopefully to stick with it this time and not stop. Um, and uh, I am looking forward to wherever we're going from here. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.